and stays being damaged, although they stress they are following up a number of other leads and tips. All this coming at NYPD officers are working 12-hour shifts, setting up checkpoints and pulling over cars and trucks. That footage was a cameraman running right, right. with his camera facing yes. backwards yes. and on. Right, right. And it makes me wonder how, if he you know, he didn't really know what he, he was capturing. He, he was he just running. Have, right? But and he had the presence of mind to keep it on, or it was just on. But right. A, you can see his body in the camera. Yes. 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 There's, a, there's also this clip um, that must have been taken from underneath a car. Right. Like, it's in the door of the wheel. That to me was, I mean, and this idea that, that the details drift. I mean, all of these, the wreckage just drifting by, you know, it's, it was this gorgeous metaphor. And, and what caught me in that scene is when yeah, the music kind of goes down but you can hear kind of almost that siren and you can see the ambulance actually right across the street sitting there also and you know, like a lot of those things were just serendipitous it's a it kind of you know you put a cut together and then you go back and you watch it and you're like wow i mean it actually looks like i'm smarter than i am you know <laughs> well, john cage you know in terms of his conceptions of music really uh stopped focusing on you know meter and started saying what about the ambient sound of an environment a sound plane and once the, that soundscape is opened up and, and that's one of the things that can happen with these kind of juxtapositions. All kinds of things begin to uh, uh, resonate that you wouldn't expect, but again, you have to kind of put on that, that, those ears at first to be open to you know, chants and, and, and those kinds of things and cultivate that in a way that maybe seems purposeful. But you know. Okay, so two more com or three more comments, and then we want to see the second half. So yeah. one, and uh, tell me your name. Yeah. Gail, and then Ray. Just really quickly, I was thinking about the running too, and I have went down a couple of weeks later to document so I could have a, a, a primary documents for my classroom because this is history, and I try and tell my students, you're not historians because they always think of history and anything they learn in isolation. Like, what am I ever going to learn in algebra? What do I need to learn this for? Who cares if it's a dangling participle? You know, it's like this stuff that they. Constantly, I was thinking of algorithms and math and how life is always moving and the, when he was saying the non-presence of the presence and I thought of absolute and I was thinking the figure eight, the sign for infinity. And as I'm re-watching the video, I have kept thinking of three words, tracing and electricity and literacy. And I can actually see the static energy, which I, students don't make that connection when they read something like that. New City Writing Project taught me is how to make those words come alive. And he mentioned, um, which is a new term I never heard of, and I wrote it down, I can't find it, how this is called hypermedia. It's a way to, a different way for students to see literacy, which is interesting. So I'm already thinking of lesson plans in my head. <laughs> you know? And the last thing I thought about was when the uh, one of the uh, narrators said, um, what is the world like when such things can happen? So I'm looking at the global connections because the students that I have now, I have to keep remembering they were in kindergarten. And it was so much easier to teach 9-11. And I, 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 I presume teachers are taught in the 60s, it was so much easier to teach the Holocaust because it was so fresh. But they do forget history and they do forget and they see everything in isolation, in a bubble. And I say to them, no, you're historians. I mean, you grew up when we had this, and you see the building of the trade center, and so I was thinking of isolations and connections that the students can make in the electricity. I gotta learn to say that. But the static that I was feeling as the vi as the visuals, I could see words in my head. I could see I was critically thinking. It wasn't just like your normal video where you just sat there and watched the video and then, okay, class, what do you think? It was it kept your broke your brain thinking and moving and thinking of yourself as a story and making those connections and it ties in to everything else, you know, they can make those connections now. So it's not just the world plates and this happened in New York City. No, it's happening to everyone. There are people of all nationalities and religions and, and then branch it out and now let's talk about the Holocaust and this and that. So they need to understand that what happens now and in the past also affects the future. So that's that non-presence 
of the present. So right. we just have to, that being gets a little bit off. That's good. Randy McCain, I know we did the same thing. was just talking about the, the connection to the Holocaust and 9 11. What struck me was hearing Philip Petit when he asked, Why'd you do this? He said, There is no why. That is a famous quote mm -hmm. from what? Primo Levi? Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. When asking a guard in Auschwitz, Why all this brutality? And the guard says, Here, there is no why. Mm -hmm. and I was, I was shaken when I heard Philip Petit say it in a totally different context. Mm -hmm. Philip Petit is talking about pure jubilation and celebration mm -hmm. of existence. And the guard is saying, in kind of pure nihilism, this, this defies reason. Uh, there is no line. Right. And, and then the two images where he's on the wire and, and the plane, the plane. Yes. it's just yes. that, that yes. moment is really one that is yes. just really is there. Yeah. That, okay. Well, very simplistic. Uh, the, the, in the very beginning, you had an IX a slash yes. and an XI. I had never right. seen that before. Yes. 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 No, I that was actually that was actually more so Jeff's idea. He kind of floated that to me. So beautiful. The, you know, the, the idea of is kind of a chiasmus is kind of the, the rhetorical term for it. It's kind of a chiasmus. Cross. Cross. I never knew that's how you pronounce that word. <laughs> I don't know what I'm saying. But totally symmetrical. Chiasmus. Yeah, I, I just didn't know that's how you pronounce it. It's like this year, 11, 11, 11. One last comment. I was struck by the images of the Twin Towers being built. Mm -hmm. and all the uh, past few weeks, you just don't see those. And how many hundreds of people thinking and planning how to go into creating a building? Is that one scene with the wires? There are thousands of wires and a man standing in front of them. Oh my God, that is a miracle that those buildings were up. They're talking about the fact now that it's taking so much longer to rebuild because of OSHA and all the restrictions <laughs> that didn't exist when they first built those towers. Okay, so we're going to do part two. Where all the harbor, all the import, all the embargoes can come.